The next chapter that we're going to cover is Camera Raw. It's chapter four. Um, it talks about an extension of uh, Adobe Bridge and Adobe Photoshop that allow you to do Camera Raw editing. But in order to be able to use Camera Raw, you must install the Camera Raw plugin if it doesn't come automatically installed with your new Creative Cloud account. Um, the first thing that I would recommend is watching this lecture and then trying to do the activities along with me and then if they don't work then you'll have to install the Camera Raw plugin. Um, the easiest thing that I can recommend to install the Camera Raw plugin is to either follow the instructions in your textbook or just Google Adobe Photoshop Camera Raw plugin CC because you want the one for Creative Cloud and then uh, you can follow the steps to install it. I believe that in the most current version of Creative Cloud that it should come automatically installed, but I'm not entirely sure and I do apologize about that. Okay, so we're gonna get started on the lecture, so I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll launch that. Our objectives for this lecture are to understand the importance of Camera Raw as an editing tool and as a file format, and how it is used by photographers to increase the quality of their photography, uh, we will perform some basic tasks in Camera Raw. Um, just of note, uh, Chapter 4 is a very long chapter, and so at a certain point in this lecture I'll say you don't have to read any further in the book. Um, you would only want to read further if you're interested, if you're a photography major, and you're interested in learning more about Raw. We're going to cover it to a certain point, and then we're going to hand it off to the advanced um, Photoshop class, Photoshop for Photographers, and they'll teach you all about Camera Raw in there. And then we want to make a connection between editing images in Photoshop and editing images in Camera Raw and start to talk about why we would want to do something in Photoshop versus Camera Raw or Camera Raw versus Photoshop. And so Camera Raw is a plugin uh, add-on to Adobe Photoshop that allows users to perform photo corrections to images prior to launching Photoshop. These adjustments include the ability to apply cropping and straightening, correct photos for defects such as poor contrast or uh, under or overexposure, color cast, blurriness, geometric distortion, and noise, which you'll, you'll learn throughout the semester, are things you could do in Photoshop as well. Um, when you are in Adobe Bridge, you can see in my screenshot here, um, you can launch an image from Bridge into Camera Raw, which will open up kind of like a, a prompt dialog, and then from there you could make changes to the image. Just the way that you could kind of launch Photoshop from, from Bridge, you could also launch um, Camera Raw from Bridge. In addition, you can launch Camera Raw from Photoshop, but we'll get to that in a minute. Some facts about Camera Raw. Processes, uh, Camera Raw can process RAW, TIFF, and JPEG photos from most digital camera models. It helps correct photo problems like over and under exposure and color casts. It is able to apply enhancements such as a vignette or grainy textures to images. Uh, it can change um, it changes to TIFF and JPEG files that are stored in the actual file. It changes to RAW files that saved as a sidecar set of instructions that are applied to the image once it is opened in Photoshop. This preserves the original RAW file. Um, that's a little bit more complex than we're probably going to get in this class. And then Camera Raw filters can be applied to any layer in Photoshop if you choose Filter and Camera Raw. And so what I would like you to know right now is that Camera Raw can be launched from Bridge or it can be launched from Photoshop or it can be launched as a filter in Photoshop. So keep that in mind. There are benefits of RAW. So RAW is a file format that you can use, but also it is Camera Raw, which is the editing um, plugin that you can use. High-end digital cameras have the ability to capture images in RAW format, as opposed to using a JPEG or a TIFF processing. We've already talked about JPEG processing, saying that it has compression, and that it has lossy compression, meaning that every time you save it, it'll delete some of the data, and that it's horrible for printing, but it might be good for the web. TIFF has processing too, but a RAW format will have no processing. You're going to have a giant file size, but you don't have to worry about the camera that you're taking the picture with. Trying to kind of help you and push you in a direction, it's literally just going to show you the, the pixels that you've captured on your own. The biggest benefit to capturing in RAW is a lack of internal processing inside of your camera. Digital cameras apply internal processing to JPEG and TIFF images, whether you want them to or not, but do not apply any processing to the RAW file. What you capture is what you get, and then if you wanted to process it, then you could process it.
You can open photos in Camera Raw in two different ways. So first, in Adobe Bridge, you can right-click on a document and you can choose to open in Camera Raw or you can select the document and choose File Open in Camera Raw from the menu. In Adobe Photoshop, you can choose a layer and you can choose Filters and then Camera Raw Filters and it will open what looks like a very similar dialog box. So you see on the left, my orange image is of this cathedral and it's very dark and you'll see that when I launched it in Camera Raw, a window appeared, it kind of took over the whole screen, but it looks very similar to what you see on the right hand side for the Photoshop window where it launched a filter and then it took over the whole screen, it's a dialog box. It's very similar. Um, the way that it processes your image is slightly different. And I have a tip for you. When applying filters in Photoshop, use smart filters. These are created by converting a layer to a smart object and then applying them as a filter. Now we don't know what smart objects are yet, but when we do, um, you should begin to use smart filters. And if you want to get a head start, you can right click on any layer in your layers panel in Photoshop and choose to convert your image to a smart object. And then when you go to apply a filter, it will automatically become a smart filter. Now that's as far as I'm going to talk about smart objects because we'll cover them later in the semester. But if you want to, go ahead and right click on a layer, convert it to a smart object, and kind of play around and see what happens.